You ever heard that famous saying, the whole is equal to the sum of its parts? What does that mean? That means if I got a box of donuts, that whole box of donuts is equal to the sum of its parts. In other words, the donuts inside the box and the box. Well, John Dalton, who's the guy who figured out this whole atomic mass business, the fact that different elements have different atomic mass, also came up with an interesting concept as to how it relates to pressure. You see, if you've got a mixture of gases, and each gas is exerting a different pressure, when you add those gas pressures together, that will give you the total pressure of the gas mixture. The total pressure of a mixture of gases is equal to the sum of the partial pressures of the gases in the mixture. If there's only two gases, just use A and B. If there's three gases, A, B, and C. If there's four gases, A, B, C, and D. As many gases as it takes to get the job done. What does this mean? Well, if the pressure of one gas is one atmosphere and the pressure of another gas is two atmospheres, then together it's a total of three atmospheres of pressure. All right, that makes sense, doesn't it? It goes a little deeper than that, though, because there's other applications we can put this to. A sealed container, <coughs> bad impression of a seal, my apologies, contains H2 gas with a partial pressure of 80.0 kilopascals and nitrogen gas with a partial pressure of 30.0 kilopascals. What is the total pressure of the container? Well, the total pressure of the container is going to equal the pressure, the partial pressure of the hydrogen gas plus the partial pressure of the nitrogen gas. Since the hydrogen has pressure of 80.0 kilopascals and the nitrogen has a partial pressure of 30.0 kilopascals, that adds up to 110 kilopascals. Why do I put the point zero there? Because when you add tenths place plus tenths place, you have to end with tenths place. So 110.0 kilopascals is the total pressure by combining the partial pressures of the two gases in the mixture. Two, the cylinder contains helium gas and argon gas. The total pressure is 3.5 atmospheres. The partial pressure of the helium is 3.50 atmospheres. What is the partial pressure of the argon? Again, very simple. The total pressure of the gas is equal to the partial pressure of helium plus the partial pressure of the argon. Since the total pressure is 5.00 atm and the pressure of the helium is 3.50 atm, the pressure of the argon is easy to find. Just simply subtract 3.50 from each side. And that leaves you with a grand total of 1.50 atm. The planet has discovered that it contains 30% carbon dioxide gas and 70% methane. Whew! Gas for a total atmospheric pressure of 60.0 kilopascals. What is the partial pressure of each gas in the atmosphere? Well, if each gas contributes the same amount to the pressure, if the amounts of gas are the same, 30% of carbon dioxide should exert 30% of the total pressure. And if it's 70% methane, the methane will exert 70% of the total pressure. So CO2 will be 60.0 kPa times 0.300. We're just taking a percent, 30% of 60. And the CH4 of that 60, 70% or 0.700 will come from the methane. So 18.0 kilopascals is carbon dioxide and 42 kilopascals comes from methane. Notice 18 and 42 adds up to 60. So if you want to find out what the partial pressure of the gases are, you know what percent that gas is? 30% of 60, that's the pressure of carbon dioxide. 70% of 60, that's the partial pressure of the methane. A sample of a mixture of gases contains two moles of oxygen and one mole of nitrogen. If the total pressure is 30 kilopascals, what's the partial pressure of each gas? Well, let's see, how many moles of gas do we have here total? We got two moles of oxygen and one mole of nitrogen. So 2 plus 1, well that would be a total of 3.0 moles. 
Now it doesn't matter whether the mole comes from the oxygen or the mole comes from the nitrogen. Remember, Avogadro's hypothesis says it doesn't matter what kind of gas you have. Equal volumes will contain equal moles as long as their temperature and pressures are the same. So, as a result of that, 3.0 moles and 300 kilopascals, 300.0 kPa divided by 3.0 moles is equal to, well, let's see, that would be a nice simple 100 kPa per mole, right? Because four sig figs, two sig figs, and two sig figs in the answer. Each mole is 100 kilopascals. Since oxygen makes up two-thirds of the gas, it's going to exert two-thirds of the pressure. Oxygen, there's two moles of it. Well, 2 times 100 would just simply be 200 kPa, and that would be for the oxygen. For the nitrogen, it's 1.0 mole times 100 kPa per mole. Well, that comes out to 100 kPa. And that accounts for our 300 kilopascals. Oxygen makes up two-thirds of it, it makes up two-thirds of the pressure too. Nitrogen makes up one-third of the gas, it'll exert one-third of the pressure. A sample of ammonia is decomposed into its component elements. What is the partial pressure of the hydrogen if the partial pressure of the nitrogen is 6.0 atmospheres? Well, this is insanely easy. If you break NH3 down into its elements, you're going to get one mole of nitrogen for every three moles of hydrogen. See that? It's a one to three ratio of nitrogen to hydrogen. Whatever nitrogen is, hydrogen is going to be three times as much. So if the pressure, partial pressure of the nitrogen is 6.0, for the nitrogen, the hydrogen will be three times that amount. And that's going to be 18 atm at the partial pressure of the hydrogen. For every one nitrogen, you get three hydrogens. It's a one to three ratio. And that works the same with pressure. One to three ratio in pressure as well. 100.0 milliliters of water is put into a 400 milliliter flask at 30 degrees Celsius and left to sit. After a time, condensation is noted on the side of the flask. Okay, in other words, you've reached vapor liquid equilibrium, which is the point at which you can measure the vapor pressure of that trapped liquid. First of all, what is the vapor pressure of water vapor at 30 degrees Celsius? Well, let's see. At 30 degrees Celsius, which would be right here, the vapor pressure of water, the second line, would be about 5 kilopascals, right? 30, that would be about halfway between, that would be about 5. Now, if the pressure in the flask was 100 kilopascals before you sealed it, what's the new total pressure? Well, you've got two gases in there now. The total pressure is equal to the pressure of the air that was sealed in there plus the pressure of the water vapor. So let's see. The pressure of the air, 100.0 kPa. Then the water evaporated and added to that 5 kPa, meaning that the total pressure is 105 kilopascals. Tenths place, ones place, round to the nearest one. And that's partial pressure. The sum of the pressures of each gas gives you the total pressure of the mixture.